Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. The Corsair has been out in DCS for over a week now and we've been really enjoying it. We've done all sorts of things with it, but we've noticed a few minor problems. Minor, but annoying. Today we're going to look at the workarounds for those problems. We started off doing some carrier landings at different speeds, at different aspects, at different wind conditions and so on. And we found it landed fine, but the handling of the aircraft overall was quite twitchy especially in the pitch you can move the stick forward or aft just a bit and the nose of the aircraft would twitch quite a lot i don't know if you agree with that viewers but let me know your thoughts then we did a general dogfight competition where we took the f4 and put it against all of the other warbirds in dcs with human pilots and we found it held its own really well in fact it beat them more than they beat it which is a great start bearing in mind that was our first dogfight in it it turned really well, but the problem we found is that its acceleration and its speed was miserable compared with those other warbirds. I remember at one point I got in a tail chase where me in the F4 was being chased by a Fokker Wolf 190A8 with nearly a thousand less horsepower and I couldn't outrun it and something just didn't feel right about that. Then we did a drag race. We took all of the warbirds in DCS, including the Corsair. We started at zero knots. We flew a five mile drag race to see which has the best acceleration, which has the best top speed down low. And we assumed that the Corsair would come somewhere, maybe in the mid pack, maybe towards the front. But actually it was right at the back with the Mosquito and the I-16, which was absolutely miserable. At the end of that, we figured it was underachieving in terms of speed, underachieving in terms of acceleration, and therefore probably probably power and was rather twitchy so first let's look at the twitchiness we've had a play with the controls and we found a basic way to dampen the twitchiness we go to adjust controls we go to the f4 we go to axis commands and we go to the pitch here and you go to axis tune and what we found is that if you put a curve on here which is normal for some planes some people have joysticks with very little throw and therefore adding some curvature it can really help but in the f4 especially adding some positive curvature really helps dampen that kind of bunny hopping that you get it doesn't get rid of it altogether but it really helps it so i'm going plus 25 curve the roll also we find a little bit too twitchy so i've got 25 on the roll and i may change that i'm not sure but also the rudder there's a massive rudder and a huge rudder effect on this aircraft so i'd suggest on the rudder also putting a curve uh, i'm going to go up to 25 as well just to dampen that down a bit as well the next problem is a bit more complex. It's the speed, it's the acceleration, and that's probably because it's not making the right amount of power. So we've had a little play around. This idea actually came from a comment on one of our videos, so thank you for whoever that was. Obviously, if we want to make the most amount of power, we want to have this lever back as much as possible. That's the propeller governor. That's the speed that the engine and the prop is allowed to turn. Now, you bind that to a control, obviously, so I've got it bound to... Um, I've just still got it on my keyboard. It's page up and page down. If I want to decrease how fast my engine spins and my prop spins, I pull it up. If I want to increase, then I put it down all the way to the stops there. Then, if I look at my engine speed taco here and I put the throttle forward, I get up to what we're used to, which is about 2,000, shown by that there and 700 so 2700 rpm and we assumed that that was the maximum that the aircraft can make but it's not and i can bring it down a bit again i can put it up again it's definitely peaking out at 2700 rpm now interestingly if i get my mouse cursor and i go and drag that even further down and this only works with the mouse cursor i can actually take it even further so using the binded commands the page up page down or something you found on your hotas would not allow you to get above 2700 rpm but if you grab it specifically with a mouse cursor and pull it down you can get all the way up to over 3400 rpm or when you're actually moving it's going to settle on about 3200 3250 and that's going to make obviously a lot more power now if i were to use my binded command again my bound command my page up page down it will max out again to 2700 rpm so we don't really know what that is. We assume it's a bug. We don't know how many RPMs the aircraft is really supposed to make. We assume 3,200, but again, we don't know. 
So the next thing we'll want to do is a drag race. Now we'll have one F4 with the 2700, the old limit that we used in the previous drag race. That will be Simba. Hasina will be in the same F4, but he will have the ability to use his mouse to drag that lever down and he'll get the 3250 RPM. What we're going to do is see how much faster it is, try and make an assessment. To be able to compare those results with the big kind of official drag race that we did a couple of days ago, we're going to put a couple of controls in there. Control one is the P47. This came in fourth place last time, just behind the P51. And we've also got wherever Dark's hiding at the P51, which came in third place last time. So we'll see where the 2700 F4 comes in. Again, it should be right at the back if everything works where the 3200 will be we have no idea where that's going to be because we haven't actually run it yet and we want to be surprised and that's it guys start setting your planes up now for this to be scientifically accurate we need to get everything perfectly as it was before so i need to close my canopy and i can remember how to do that it's like that i need to close my cowls like that one more thing before we go viewers there is a visual bug with the f4 the gear does not retract visually it does actually retract on their screen but on my screen we'll see the gear still out so you just have to you know imagine that's not like that no idea what's about to happen but we're about to make history guys on three two one now Whip. try not to hit each other Oh, something on my right is creeping forward. Gear up. Re-engage whip. Something on my right is creeping forward. That's the 3200. Now, where's Simba? I don't dare look back yet because I'm still trying to control the bird. Jesus, it's like a rockside like Concord. What the hell? And you can see, look, Simba is struggling. And the only difference between those two birds is the amount of RPM we're putting through the engine. Wow, look at that. Oh, we're going to have to rerun this now with a fast planes the 109 and the 190 freaking unreal i was about to ask for your speed but you're in knots aren't you so it's sort of irrelevant mm, no miles per hour uh, knots on the gauge Watch out. now where's that mustang interestingly i'm beating the mustang this no it's not it's going to beat me again almost carbon copy no i might beat it so Either I'm flying slightly better, or much more likely, Dark is not as flying as well as Hasina. But we were neck and neck last time, and it's pretty much neck and neck again. So this is a good control, pretty much. I mean, this you know, quarter of a second in it. Well, I finished. Unbelievable. But that much power difference, that feels like six, seven hundred more horsepower. I did not expect that. Right, uh, that was a pretty crappy test as it turns out because it was much faster than we thought. We're going to rerun it, I think, guys. But instead of the Jug and the Mustang, we're going to have the first and second place is the 109 and the 190. Welcome back. This time we're going to have the front runners. The 109 was the fastest, and I'm sure it still will be the fastest. The second was the Dora. This one, um, I've just got to set my jet up. So that goes forward. Check. I need to make sure my flaps up. So much to remember on these warbirds. They're all different. Cap, you're cheating now by flying a jet. <laughs> all right, same as last time. Three, two, one, go. She's had a massive misfire in the engine. Worst time ever. What should we do about that one, viewers? Gear up. Oh, jeez. This thing is wayward. Outside view. Okay, there's Simba on my left. Remember the gear bug. They have their gear up. It just looks like they have it down. Well, the, oh my God, could it beat the 109? Could it now be the fastest warbird in game? Is that what we're seeing here? A translation of power from the Germans over to the American. It could be. It might be. I can't see the German. He's off on my Avo somewhere. There he is. Oh, walking away from me. Unbelievable, unbelievable. How much horsepower is that thing making now? It feels like about 3,000 horsepower. I'm going to pause it as you go past the carrier. Tell me as you're going past the carrier. No, it's okay. We've got the tack view. doesn't matter. Ignore me. Imagine how much better it would do in the dogfight series now. We've got an extra 700 Finished. horsepower. Unbelievable. Well, what can I say, viewers? 
we now have a new fastest warbird look and you can see that one was right back there uh, the Dora has a bad start it has a big misfire but it actually did the same on the previous thing so makes complete sense Simba gets a much better start than me but I really mean just like happened on the previous race but here's the exciting thing look at Asina look at the K4 um, that's gonna be knots rather than miles an hour so you got to reduce it by 15% sorry increase it by 15% if you want to get to miles an hour already you're at 200 200 30 miles an hour. I'm fighting at the back with Simba. I'm just getting into my stride now. And that's neck and neck we go. Until we got out over the water and then... And that's it. Sheer horsepower. It's going to be interesting to see the difference in speed at the end point between Hasina and Simba. I mean, it's not just faster. It's, it's, it's leaps and bounds faster. Look at that. You're 300, you're 350 miles an hour. That's 350 miles an hour. This guy's 320 miles an hour. You're now 360 miles an hour, 370 miles an hour. Huge speed, and you're going faster and faster and faster. 330 is 380 miles an hour, and stop. So we've got 332, add 15% is, I think it's about 380, 385 miles an hour. Personally, I think that's probably a bit over spec, so maybe we're in a position now where we're allowed to over rev the engine, what it can do in real life. I don't know the answer to that, it's just me guessing. But that was 334. It's almost slow jet speed, that is. Dark, a slightly unachieving um, compared to what the 109 did on the previous battle. On the previous battle, we just hit 300. So it's 10 miles an hour slower, but still, 10 knots slower, but still is where it should be ahead of the Dora. The Dora, slightly better. Um, no, the same as what it achieved last time. It's just slower accelerating than the 109. So we've got 300 knots, 350 miles an hour. It's where it should be. And Simba, it did pretty well compared to the slow F4 last time, but still 280, and it was 280 last time. So everything was the same pretty much as last time, there, apart from the 3250 RPM F4, which was leaps and bounds ahead. In fact, it was 60 knots, 70 knots, 60 knots faster than that one there, which is amazing, guys. Uh, I definitely feel like it is overperforming a little, but I think we're at least a bit closer to maybe what the Corsair should be doing. Like, because it's well known for its speed, the Corsair. Mm -hmm. Everyone's always mentioning the tests that I think it was the Navy did between the Corsair and the 51, and the Corsair just leaps and bounds over the Mustang in apparently every situation. And this also fixes the problems in the dogfights. In the dogfights, it did really well. It couldn't outturn a Spitfire, and you wouldn't expect it to, but it could outturn a lot of stuff. The problem came with speed. It really struggled to accelerate, and this fixes it. So it becomes an excellent, excellent dog dogfighter as well, guys. That's what we've got for you today, viewers. It was a bit long-winded, but it was also very scientifically interesting. I hope you enjoyed that, and bye-bye.